Have you wondered how you could buy your first multifamily property or your first apartment complex? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, even if you're a complete beginner. Just so I can show you that I know what the hell I'm talking about, I am a real estate broker, a commercial real estate broker here in San Diego. I've done over $250 million in sales. I own a portfolio of over 100 units, totaling $50 million in portfolio value with my partner and I here in San Diego County. Be sure to stay till the end of the video so you can see some some big bonuses on how I built my real estate portfolio so quickly by the age of 26. So let's start with point number one. What is a multifamily property? In the simplest terms, a multifamily property is an asset, a real asset where there's more than one family or more than one tenant living on the property. So a duplex, triplex, fourplex, eightplex, a hundredplex, anything that has more than one unit is a multifamily property. And why are multifamily properties so valuable for investing and so beneficial. The reason why they're so beneficial is because they have the four benefits that no other asset has. A steady cash flow, principal pay down, depreciation, which is also known as tax benefits that I'll mention later in the video. And number four, you have appreciation, of course. It's also highly in demand. In San Diego, we are over 70,000 units behind on meeting the amount of renters that need homes, according to Sandag, a large San Diego housing analyst here locally. If you're a renter, it's hard to find a place to live. If you're an owner of multifamily, this is really good for you because this means rent prices will go up because supply and demand, low supply, high demand, prices go up. And also, if you're looking to buy an apartment complex, there's a lot of competition out there. A lot of people want to own multifamily. When COVID happened, there was a huge exodus from retail and office owners selling out of those properties and they all went into multifamily. There was even a ton of hotel operators who sold a bunch of hotels and bought multifamily here in San Diego. I saw a ton of that happen. It's actually how I built a big client base base down in San Diego. Honestly, my favorite thing about multifamily properties is pure cash flow. The cash flow in my buildings are amazing. I mean, I'm making a passive income of about 25 grand a month from my properties, net after all expenses, after loan expenses. It's been absolutely amazing and given me the financial freedom to do stuff like this, to give back to people that might not know about the beauty of investing in multifamily real estate. And the reason why multifamily properties have such less risk than single family homes or office buildings or any other asset because you can rent a house or a building just like that. When you rent a single family home, it is easy, but if that tenant moves out and you can't rent it, you're 100% vacant for a couple of months or a month or whatever it is. So the reason why multifamily is so great, if you have a 30 unit building and two tenants move out, you're still cash flowing, you're still paying your mortgage, you're still paying all your expenses, you're doing great. So that's why multifamily is so much better than buying a single family home. If you own a single family home or condos right now, I would highly recommend selling those assets, taking those profits, and buying apartment complexes. This is how real wealth is built. Another reason why multifamily is the best asset is because the risk factor. The risk factor in multifamily is extremely low. Like I said before, people will always need a place to live, even in the worst of times. When COVID happened here in San Diego, we had 96% rent collections every single month, even when no one had a job. Like March, 2020, when everyone thought that we were gonna die, literally every single person in the county was still paying rent except for 4% of renters, 4%, think about that. So whether we have another huge recession coming up or whatever, if the market goes crazy and all things crumble, people still need a place to sleep at night. I mean, people aren't just gonna become homeless all of a sudden because they can't pay their rent. I mean, they're always gonna have enough jobs to pay rent. Rents are not gonna go down even in the toughest of times because so many people are competing for these houses or these apartment units in the county. All in all, the risk in multifamily is extremely low. The next point I wanna talk about is scalability. This is also one of my favorite reasons to own multifamily real estate. It is so scalable. Let me tell you a quick story to explain that. The reason why multifamily is so scalable is I owned two fourplexes, two small little fourplexes, eight units total, and I flipped them. I renovated them, I re-rented them, and I sold them a year later. Instead of having to manage two properties, I sold those two properties and bought a 20 unit building here in San Diego with those profits. And now I have a 20 unit building in one location and I have one on-site manager. She takes care of most of the problems of the property. And we have an off-site third-party manager who does, who does the leasing, who helps with the maintenance, all that stuff. So it's been absolutely amazing. In five to six years, I'll probably sell that and buy a 40 unit building 
building and then I'll buy a 60 unit building and then I'll buy an 80 unit building. The amazing thing about real estate and of multifamily real estate is that you can always keep trading up higher and higher and higher. It's the 1031 exchange, tax free exchange. You don't pay taxes, you don't pay capital gains, you take all your profits and you roll it into a bigger property. Just to make it clear, you're deferring those taxes. So if you do cash out at the end of your life, you will have to pay the taxes. The gains will follow you from the first property you sold. So this is why the term swap till you drop was started because you should always swap and never cash out. And when you do pass away, your heirs will inherit that property and they'll have the step up in basis and they can sell it without paying any capital gains. So that is the game of real estate. The last thing I really want to mention in this video is highlighting the power of the tax benefits of owning real estate. I netted over $1.8 million last year in my business and I paid zero in federal taxes, zero. How did I do it? Everyone asked me, I own assets. So my business made 1.8 million as a real estate broker. Over here, I have my real estate business. In my real estate business, I had a ton of construction. So I bought properties and I fixed them up and every single upgrade I did, electrical, roof, foundation, the kitchens, bathrooms, the paint, everything, all those expenses are a write-off to my income. So I can write off all the construction, I can write off the depreciation, which basically means that the IRS believes a property becomes obsolete in 27 and a half years. So when you buy a million dollar property, you depreciate a portion of that purchase price every single year over 27 and a half years. Usually the rule of thumb, talk to a CPA, but the rule of thumb is the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the building value or the property value can be written off because you can only write off the building value and not the land value. So you can write off the building, but not the land. So if you have vacant land, you can't depreciate anything because you don't have a building on the property. So that's very important to know. The thing about depreciation is you can make it basically go on steroids by using what's called the cost segregation strategy. And listen carefully, what the cost segregation strategy does for you is that you you can write off most of that depreciation in the first one to two years of your investment property. So if I buy a property and it's $2 million and I can write off $1.6 million of it, I wrote off almost $800,000 in one year on a $2 million asset the first year I bought the property. I do that with two properties and I make 1.8 million. I write off 1.8 million in construction. I'm probably gonna be negative in gross income. I'm negative on paper, but in reality I'm building wealth because what happens when I put in construction funds into the property, what happens when I depreciate the asset, I'm not paying taxes. And when I have construction funds, I'm using that to increase the value of the property. So not only am I appreciating the property, but I'm depreciating the building value in order to write off my brokerage income. So all very, very powerful stuff. So that's how I want to end the video. That's how real wealth is built. That is the game on how the richest people own properties and don't pay any taxes. It's why the headlines of Donald Trump came out on how he doesn't pay any taxes it's because he owns real estate. Us real estate owners, we pay a ton of taxes. We pay property taxes, we pay building insurance, we pay all these expenses, water bills, electric bills, and we're paying a bunch of taxes on our cash flow every year when it's all said and done in the future. We have big gains, but when you're in growth mode like me, you don't see much of an income stream because you're putting it all back into your properties. Once it's all stabilized and it, the dust settles, that cash flow will become taxable income. But hope that helped. In conclusion, I just want to say if I was only a real estate broker, so if I was a commercial real estate broker doing really well and I made almost $2 million last year, which I did in 2022, I probably would have paid the IRS over $900,000, $800,000, if I did not own any real estate. And keep in mind, I live in California. This is the worst place for taxes. So I would have gotten absolutely hammered. If I didn't own any real estate today, my net worth would be maybe a million dollars, maybe. Save your money, keep your ego at bay, and buy an asset as soon as possible. This house behind me, I'm still renting it. I rent this house, I don't even buy it. You know why? Because this house is worth $1.2 million and I rent it for $4,000 a month. If I bought this house, I'd be putting in $300,000 to buy it. That's fresh capital, 300K out of my pocket that I saved up for. And my mortgage, taxes, insurance would be over $9,000 a month with today's interest rates at 6.5%. 
would I do that when I can rent this for 4,000 a month and I can put that 300 grand into a fourplex and cash flow every single month and grow that into even more money, right? It doesn't make any sense. This behind me is a liability. I'm just living here to shelter for my dogs, my girlfriend. This isn't an investment. This is a place to live. Where you buy property to make money and to rent it out to tenants, that's where you make your money. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna learn more, feel free to check out my YouTube channel by clicking my name below and check out all the free tutorials I have. Every video I have is completely free. And if you wanna reach out to me, feel free to DM me on my Instagram or comment below on, at Jason Joseph Lee. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.